We know that the regime is forcefully evicting people from the areas perceived to be flood, <laughs> flood prone and riparian land. And such evacuations, whether mandatory or voluntary, must be done in a human, humane manner that respects human rights without causing further deaths. The reckless and reactionary strategy of the Kenya Kwanza regime has caused the death of a young boy by the name Ian Otieno. Ian was killed yesterday when the government bulldozers forcefully evicted those living in Madare. Almost a day or so after President Ruta had been there and, and told, uh, telling everybody that you will not be moved until at least some adequate alternative shelter has been found. On Saturday, two Kenyans also lost their lives in similar circumstances in Mukuru slums. These actions of a disastrous regime must stop. In light of the current tragedy, we demand that this regime adopt protective measures of early warnings and facilitation relocation of communities in imminent risk of being affected by the floods and adhere to effective disaster management strategies. As we also insist that the Kenya Kwanza regime A provide emergency or provide emergency relief services, including food, shelter, and medical care to meet the basic needs of all um, the displaced, evicted, and affected populations. B, deliver assistance in rebuilding homes and infrastructure destroyed by the floods with an emphasis on sustainable development and disaster resilient construction. C, develop and strengthen infrastructure and systems that enhance the country's resilience to natural disasters and facilitate effective response mechanisms. And D, fast track policies and legislative frameworks the focus on comprehensive disaster risk reduction and climate adaptation measures and ensure active community involvement in these processes. Number two, the doctor's strike is another disaster. As Mio expresses concerns over the two months of doctor's strike that has disrupted healthcare services in the country, this is another disaster that has been occasioned by disastrous Kenya, Kenya Kwanza regime in its failure to fully promptly address the doctor's concerns. The doctor's strike continues to highlight the incompetence of the Kenya Kwanza regime in dealing with the healthcare system in our country. The response from the regime has not only been an inadequate, but also completely out of touch with the reality facing the people. We note that the Labor and Relations Court has ordered the striking doctors and the government to reach an agreement within 48 hours, and I think time has been ticking. While we have seen the efforts by the doctors to end the strike, we are yet to see the commitment from the government side to do the same. We ask the Kenya Kwanza regime to take advantage of the 48-hour window given by the courts and immediately reach an agreement with doctors that you see a resumption of normalcy in public hospitals, failure to which we shall mobilize the public and other unions to join in a national strike. We have said this before, and there are various ways of actually joining in this endeavor. Um, what we're basically saying is, can this matter come to an end? As a result of these uh, uh, floods, Waterborne diseases are now, we've seen the headlines in the, in the major newspapers today, a um, problem with cholera in, in Tana River County and elsewhere, everywhere. Now with the doctors on strike, what else can this be other than disastrous? On the critical matter of General Ogola's death, ah, we demand for a parliamentary select committee immediately. On April the 18th, 2024, the Chief of Defense Forces, General Francis Omondi Ogola, Ogola, lost his life in the course of duty. Excuse me. Together with nine other gallant officers of KDF. 
We note with concern that the Kenya Kwanza regime has moved on swiftly, leaving the families of the departed soldiers with no help. They also are yet to establish a time-bound public inquiry into the cause of the chopper crash. We reiterate our earlier demands of securing the services of independent and international experts or investigators who will get to the bottom of this matter. The ongoing investigation by the Kenya Air Force is a limited internal affair that does not satisfy the requirement of an open, transparent, independent, and credible investigation. We too demand that a parliamentary select committee inquiring into the tragedy be set up immediately. Kenyans are concerned and suspicious that the tragic death of the four-star general and his colleagues may be connected to sinister political machinations. This is particularly so, particularly so given the unsubstantiated allegations against his person relating to the 2022 presidential elections. And fourthly, we want to deal with the fake fertilizer disaster. As a Zemio, we thank the 149 members of the National Assembly who voted to impeach the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Livestock Development. We are aware that his impeachment trial is ongoing with Parliament calling for a special sitting to deliberate on the Select Committee report on Monday the 13th. We expect that 11 members of the Select Committee will honor the vote of the 149 members and confirm Linturi's impeachment from office. Linturi's reign as the Minister of Agriculture and Livestock Development has been nothing short of a disaster. Kenyan farmers were supplied with fake fertilizer that not only destroyed the entire planting and harvest season, but also degraded their land. The entire land has now become economically unviable for many uh, seasons to come. This can only be described as economic sabotage. Apart from the impeding impeachment, Lenturi must also be tried in the anti-corruption courts for the crimes of economic sabotage. Finally, we urge all the parliamentarians to critically scrutinize the budget policy statement and and the coming finance bill 2024 which is bound to introduce a new wave of taxes with disastrous consequences for ordinary Kenyans who are already suffering from the current high cost of living. Indeed, we conclude that Kenya Kwanza is so far a disastrous regime that should be impeached in its entirety. But we are not into that yet. We're just sounding a warning shot. And this is the democratic country we have all fought to establish.